Well, joining the conversation, we have former U.S. Senator now and NBC News and MSNBC political analyst Claire McCaskill. And Claire, we are so glad you're back and everybody is okay. I know you had a scare in your family and a health issue, and but we are just so blessed to have you back and happy for you. Thank you. I just need to tell you that there is one thing that makes everyone on Twitter be nice, and that is having a grandson <laughs> that is diagnosed with a brain tumor and has to have emergency surgery. Mm. Everyone was so kind. He's home from the hospital and doing great. And I'm very oh. grateful to all the people out there that expressed love and prayers and support. Oh my goodness, Claire, mm. thank you for sharing that. And we're so glad you're back and we're so glad he's okay. Also joining us this morning, former treasury official and Morning Joe economic analyst, Steve Ratner. He brought with him, with him his charts on the economic state of U.S.-China relations. So, really perfect timing for those charts. Perfect timing. So, Steve, you say it's not going to be quite so easy uh, to, to punish China economically if they send weapons to Russia. Why is that? It's not going to be quite so easy, Joe, because China is a completely different kettle of fish from Russia in terms of our economic relations with them, our dependence on them economically, and their centrality in the world economy. And what you can see on this first chart is how important China is as a source of our imports. We import over $500 billion a year of stuff from China. It is by far our largest trading partner, four times what we imported from them uh, as recently as 2021 and eclipsing all these well, other and, countries. And Steve, that cuts both ways too, right? We're their number one market, so both of us have an incentive to figure out how to make things work, right? We have a huge incentive ha uh, for, to figure out how to make things work, and it's, I think, a mystery to some of us why China even wants to get into this uh, Ukraine, Russia, U.S. triangle, but they do. But yes, the, it goes both, it definitely goes both ways. They want to sell stuff to us. But it also limits our ability to put sanctions on them, particularly when you look at the uh, number and range of products that we get heavily, if not completely, from China. All right, let's talk about your second chart. That, well, that's exactly what my second chart shows. And what you can see here on the left is what we get from China and, uh, and the percentages of it. And so we get something like $80 billion. We import something like $80 billion a year of cell phones from China. We don't really make cell phones here anymore. And 60% of all of our cell phones come from China. Computers, slightly less money, but a similarly high percentage. Toys we don't make here anymore. They mostly come from China and so on and so forth. And what's interesting is you can contrast it on the right with what do we send to China. The answer is not a whole heck of a lot. We sent a bunch of soybeans. That's actually come down because of tariffs that went back and forth under the Trump administration. And then a few other odds and ends, including actually some computer chips, but very low end ones. And so the sort of balance of trade power, if you want to call it that, is unfortunately very much on the Chinese side. And let me also add, things that we did to Russia, like cutting them out of the world financial system, barring all trade with them, things like that, it's just not practical to do with China, given these kinds of numbers that I'm showing you. So, Steve, your next chart surprising me, because I must say, over the past several years, uh, obviously, you're, you're, you're talking to CEOs, business owners, entrepreneurs, investors every day. I, I, you know, I, I do it randomly here and there. But my gosh, every time I, I strike up conversations with, with CEOs or business owners, entrepreneurs, investors, I always ask about China. I'm fascinated by it. And the last several years, I've got nothing but negative comments. They hate working in China. They hate traveling to China. They know that the second they go to China, their phone is like their phone's being hacked into, their laptops are being hacked into. Environmentally, they don't like it. They say the people uh, are, are not the nicest people in the world. I mean, it is just a deluge of criticism uh, about uh, working in China, working with China, far different than it was, say, 10 years ago um, wh when people were all excited about rushing into China. Um, uh, but you say that uh, our ownership stakes, despite all of that, continue to grow in Chinese businesses. Tell us about it. Yeah, Joe, I, I agree with uh, certainly everything you said. None of us particularly like going to China uh, and fine. Dealing with the Chinese can be very difficult, opaque at, the, at best. But you can see on this chart what has happened to 
U.S. companies' activities in China. They're simply getting more deeply into China with every, with every passing year. And you can see here, for example, uh, Tesla, which sold no cars really almost anywhere back in 2011, now sells 26 percent of its cars in China. Intel, 26 percent of its sales are in China. And then companies like Nike, Apple, Starbucks, all very heavily dependent on China for their sales. Now, this doesn't mean they make stuff here and sell it to China. We don't do that. They make stuff either in China or elsewhere and sell it in China. But it's a very important source of profits for these countries. And so it's a, it's a love-hate relationship, really, between the companies in China. They don't love it, but they know that they need it. And so, in fact, uh, later this month, there's China's going to, for the first time in three years, have its big international, what they call the Chinese Development Forum, and you're going to see a parade of U.S. CEOs uh, led by Tim Scott, uh, Scott from Apple and so on and so forth, Tim Cook from Apple and so on and so forth, uh, parading over to China to continue to try to do business there. And so that all this yeah, so makes it so difficult. It makes it so difficult for, for us to do anything along the lines of what we did in Russia. We can sanction some individual yeah. companies. We've done that. We can ban some uh, exports of critical technologies. We've done that. But in terms of really broad-based economic punishment, that doesn't seem likely. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Claire, um, let me just ask you, uh, uh, if you were sitting on a committee right now in the Senate, and you said, Let, let's show this third chart. Um, everybody's talking about TikTok. I certainly understand why, uh, talking about the need to get it out of, uh, get it out of, um, whether it's government, government owned, phones, government owned and phones or, devices. And, 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 you know, even out of the U.S. I just look at Apple and I just wonder, is it how, how wise is it for all of us to be carrying around telephones, communication devices that are so easily hacked into, uh, the majority of which are made in China? Well, I think Tim Cook would disagree with you that an Apple phone is easily hacked into, but there's no question that China has been stealing our stuff for a long time um, in business and in a variety of different ways. And they are um, they have they have robbed us of a lot of technology. There's no question about it. But this interdependence is the challenge. From, from my perspective, the more difficult question about China is the move they're making on Russia right now. I'm worried about Taiwan because mm -hmm. if the American mm -hmm. public loses its appetite for supporting Ukraine, if the American public decides that politically they're not that excited about our assistance to Ukraine, how would the American public feel about going to war over Taiwan? And China knows that. China knows that we are in a more vulnerable position because of the fatigue that the Americans are beginning to feel about the financial support of the Ukraine military. So I think that is something, aside from the economy, that is really should be front of mind for a lot of the policymakers in Washington.